Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. God, He is merciful, kind, and loving. He is a God that has much to provide. In fact, His resources are without limit. But again and again we see that God is a God of detail. He is one that sets forth His will in a very specific manner. And when it comes to worship, we see those details, those specific things that He commands, they are foundational, they are vital. And when we look as we have been now for several months in the book of Exodus, and not just in the book of Exodus, but for several months in regard to the tabernacle, how it was laid out, what did it consist of, how was it made, and what was its purpose. These things are repeated over and over for us. And repetition shows emphasis. It shows that which is of great significance. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Exodus, and we're going to begin chapter 39. The book of Exodus and chapter 39. Now, in this section that we're going to be studying this evening, it's all about one thing, and that is the garment, first and foremost, of the high priests. Here, we're speaking about Aharon or Aaron. But also, we see certain aspects of these garments that relate to all the priests what's called B'nai Haron, the sons of Aaron. So it's the garments, the priestly garments, so that they can, and we're going to see two words, they are similar, but, but there is a difference. They are similar in their letters, but they are also different in their meaning. And the word is where we have the Hebrew word misrad, which is an office. So these, we're going to be told, are the garments of that priestly office. And what's so important is that priestly office is to, lesharet, is for the purpose of serving, serving God by ministering to others. This is foundational in the work of the priests. They were servants of God, but they ministered to others. And that is a very important principle for us to understand because we, through being grafted in, if you are a Gentile, those who are Jewish, same experience, same call now, we are one in Messiah. And that oneness is for the purpose of ministry, serving God, carrying out this royal priesthood, this kingdom of priests, in order that the purpose, the ministry, the work of Yeshua HaMashiach, Messiah, Jesus, might be fulfilled in us. And we want to emphasize that, that His life is now lived out through us. It's no longer about me and you. It's about Him in us by means of the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. So these garments have great significance. Let's begin as I mentioned, Exodus 39, a new chapter, and we'll begin in verse 1. We see once again, and these words have repeated, and they'll continue to repeat this evening. Where it says, and from the techelet, this is that unique purple, or excuse me, blue, oftentimes translated by the English word turquoise. So it's this unique blue or turquoise. Now we come to the next word, argaman, which is that, that royal, that, that luxurious purple color. 
And then we see the tola'at ha-shani, which is scarlet. It says, from these, they made the garments of the office. And of course, we're speaking about the priestly office. Big day sharad. And we see here, sarad is the word for, for office. So the garments of their office. Le Charet for the purpose of serving Bakodesh. This is in the holy place. They made the garments, these holy garments, which were for Aaron, just as, and this is going to be repeated over and over in this section, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, why is that there, this expression, just as the Lord commanded Moses? Again, it is to emphasize that the work of worship, and there's nothing wrong with using the word work of worship because in Hebrew, the primary word for worship is the word avodah, which is work. So work of worship is when we recognize the authority of God and we follow his instructions. Verse, verse 2. And he made thee in the first uh, garment we're going to deal with is what's called the ephod, which is like the, the vest. So it's the priestly vest. And he made the vest, and it was made of gold. Once again, this techelet, this blue, and argaman, this purple. And once more, tola'at shani, scarlet, and sheish, mashzar, which is twisted linen. And these four, four things here, gold was used throughout the tabernacle. But we see that these four materials, what's called techelet, argaman, tola'at shani, and sheish, mashzar, repeated throughout all of these things we've spoken about relating to the tabernacle. Verse 3. Now, you're going to see that if you're following along in your Bibles, there's going to be some slight differences. I went through this thoroughly, consulted a few different translations to see what you might be, be reading, and then went over it with my wife with her Bible, and so we had a good understanding of how the English renders it. And there are some differences. And these differences are problematic because they are not reflected in the text. Look at verse 3. And they beat. Now, what did they beat? Well, some Bibles say they beat into golden sheets. But it literally says they beat at Pache Hazahav. They did not beat into golden sheets, but they beat these golden sheets. So they took sheets and they beat them into a thicker piece, making them one. And they cut their threads to make with it the, the blue and with the purple and with the scarlet and with the linen. And it was the work of Choshev, which is thinking a design, a thoughtful work. And we use the term design. So all of this was according to the design of God. And they made this, this uh, vest in this way. When they took these materials along with sheets of gold and they beat and they also cut the word kitsets, they cut the threads to make with these four substances, this blue, purple, scarlet, and this twisted linen. All of this was the work of a design. It was planned. It was not just happened, but it was all towards a detail. Verse 4. Now, verse 4, we have the word ketefot. This is word for shoulders, but it's referring to, in this context, the shoulder straps. And so when it says in some English translations later on upon the shoulders, it's referring to the shoulder straps, which were, of course, on the shoulder. But it's always referring to these straps that the ephod had. 
Keep reading verse 4. And the shoulder straps he made for it, and the word is chovrot, which is to join. It's in the plural, so these places to join it. So once more, the shoulder straps that were made for it were joining the two sides. And then we have the word chubar, which is it's joining. So with the two sides, it was joined together to make it one. Verse 5. And the design of his, and it may be referring to Aaron or to the priests, the design of his vest, which was upon him. Then it says, Mimenu. From it, it was according to its work of gold, of blue, of purple, of scarlet, and twisted thread. So once more, we see this consistency of materials that was made in this same way with these same things for a purpose. And that purpose was to minister, to do the work that everything, and we'll see in a moment why these, these shoulder straps were so important that they fit tightly and held everything in place. We'll come to that in a moment. Look now to, to the second part of verse 5. Once more, we see this expression, Ka'asher tziva Hashem et Moshe, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Over and over, showing submissiveness. Verse 6, And they made the stones of Shoham. Now, I'm not going to translate many of these stones because there's much debate about the Hebrew word and what it relates to, what type of stones. I think some will say onyx here. We really don't know what a shoham stone is. So I'm just going to, unless it's something that is very well affirmed by numerous sources and authorities, I'm going to leave the stones that are going to be mentioned, these 12 stones, in the original language. Once again, verse 6, And they made the stones of shoham, and they were uh, encircled in a golden setting. So we see here that they, they're placed in a golden setting round about. And they were engraved, these stones, with the engraving of the signet. And this may be referring to the signet rain that people were familiar with. And why that's there is because this signet, signet rain spoke of authority. And it speaks simply of the authority that God gave Israel in regard to Israel's call, Israel's purpose. So this expression is important. They were engraved with the engraving of the signet concerning the names of the children of Israel. Now, you can't come away from this without seeing significance in regard to the children of Israel. Verse 7. And he placed them upon the shoulder straps of the ephod, this vest. And they were to be avne zikaron, stones of remembrance for the children of Israel. So the worship that the priests performed was to have an impact upon the children of Israel. And this teaches us a vital principle that worship, when it's done properly, it has a, an effect, an outcome, an influence upon people. So these stones, which were upon his shoulders, when he went in to serve, each priest, especially the high priest, we see that it was for the remembrance. These stones reminded him of the children of Israel. Again, Ka'asher Tziva Hashem et Moshe, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 8. Now in verse 8, we come to an additional uh, part of the garments. And we're speaking here about the choshen, and this was the breastplate. So we've seen the shoulder straps with the stones. We've also seen the general piece, this vest, this ephod, and now we're dealing with the breastplate, which we'll see is connected to the ephod in a very significant way. Verse 8. And he made the choshen, the breastplate, also ma'aseh choshev 
work of design work of intelligence of thought according to the work of the vest the effort it was gold and blue and purple and scarlet and this twisted linen and then we find that it was a square and it was folded we talked about this that the breastplate was folded over and we read very carefully look again it was a square they made this this breastplate zert arco be zert rochvo kafu a zert is a measurement now i don't know how it's translated in many of your bibles but many authorities see it as a half cubic but the word in hebrew zeret so it's it's smaller than from here to the end of my fingertips according to many it's half of this others say it was even smaller than that we won't go into all the explanations but we simply are told here that it was one zeret in length and one zeret in width it was folded over and it was a square what was in this this cushion this breastplate look at verse 10 and they filled it with four rows of stone the first row we're going to be told is a row of odem pit da and barachet now most see barachet as emerald this was one row verse 11 the second row consisted of nofech sapir which is sapphire and yahalom which most would see as diamonds verse 12 the third row was leshem shavo and achlama here again much debate we won't deal with what they are in english or any other language we'll just leave them in the hebrew designations verse 13 and the fourth row tarshish shoham and also yashpe and these were encircled and engraved with this gold setting in their filling so once again they were encircled in this setting and they were gold the setting was a gold setting and for their filling putting the stone in these settings of gold verse 14 and the stones concerning the names second time we're told this the stones were concerning the names of the children of israel behold they are 12 concerning their names and once again we see that expression which means that they were engraved similarly to the the signet which speaks about authority the one who had the signet reign had the authority could accomplish things do things transact business bring about change and this is what worship as i said is supposed to do israel is supposed to be changed so that israel can impact the world and ultimately when israel is changed there will be a change in the world and that change is called the establishment of the kingdom of god once more verse 14 and the stones concerning the names of the children of israel behold 12 names according to their names were the engraving as the signet each man according to his name 12 tribe the 12 tribes so very very precise we're speaking about the 12 tribes of israel verse 15 also concerning this breastplate we see verse 15 and they made the breastplate chains that that were at the ends this is the word border so what we find here is at the end there were these chains and there was a purpose for these chains we see here that they were the work of braid these chains were braided and they were a pure gold 
verse 16. And they made two settings of gold and two rings of gold, and they put the two rings upon the two sides of the breastplate. And what these rings, these golden rings were on each side, they, as we're going to be told, are for the connecting of the chains, these golden chains that were braided, for connecting the breastplate to the ephod. We'll see that specifically carried out and mentioned in the next verse. Look now at verse 17. And they put the two gold braids. Now, this is the chains that were braided. But in this passage, if you read carefully, it simply says, So they placed the two braided gold braids, and they're speaking of these chains, upon the two rings, upon the two sides of the choshen, verse the breastplate verse 18 and the two ends the two braids they set upon the two engravings and they set them upon the shoulder straps of the ephod which was towards his face meaning in the front so what it simply says is is that they took these gold chains that were braided and they placed upon the breastplate these rings on the sides to join the the golden chains that were braided to the breastplate and we're going to see that that eventually connected to the the ephod now look at verse 19 and they made two rings of gold and they set it upon the two ends of the breastplate upon its side, which was on the side of the vest, on the inner, meaning the front of it. And they made two rings of gold and they set them upon the two, and here it is, the two shoulder straps of the ephod, the vest. Down below, and it also says towards his face, meaning on the inner side. And opposite for its joining up above. And this was for the work, the work of the, the ephod, which was the design work according to what was thought out, the plan. So we see here, it's very important that we look. It talks about it being for this both down below, there were two rings, and also up above. So it was firmly fixed in two places, on the shoulder straps up above and also down below, that both of these places joined together the, the breastplate to the ephod, that it was secure. Why do I say that it was secure? Look now to verse 21. And they fastened the breastplate from these rings, its rings, to the rings of the vest. And they did so, how? Well, it was also with a techelet thread. This is a, a turquoise or a blue thread or cord, I believe many Bibles say, to be according to the design of the vest. In order that, it says, Velo Yizak, so that it would not move, that the breastplate would not move from the ephod. And once more, Kashir Tzivashem et Moshe, just as the Lord commanded Moses. So we see now that he's talked about the breastplate. He's talked about the shoulder straps, which had the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel, three names on each row, each tribe a different stone. And then we see the, the breastplate and how the breastplate had rings on the top and bottom that they were connected with these golden chains that were braided. And also they were connected with this, this gold, or excuse me, blue tachelet, this blue cord 
as well. So you can see how they were designed. Now we're ready for verse 22, and we deal with a new garment, the me'il. In modern Hebrew, me'il is a, a coat. But this is a, a covering. Some will say robe in English. And he made the coat of the vest. This is the word epho, the coat of the vest. And now we see it's mase oreg. Oreg is the word for weaving. Our study center is on the street called Ha Orgin, the street of the weavers because we are in an industrial area. And therefore, they take names such as weavers and different types of craftsmen. So we look and we see in this passage of Scripture, verse 22, and he made the coat of the vest, the work of weaving, all of it was techelet, all of it was blue. So this coat was all blue. Upi hama'il, this is the mouth, which would be the opening. Now, this is kind of a, a garment that has, just like a t-shirt has an opening that you put your head through, the me'il also had, it was constructed, that you put it on by placing it over your head, and therefore there was an opening. It uses the Hebrew word p, which is like the word pe, mouth. So the, the opening of the coat was in the midst, and it was as the armor. Now, what it's saying here is this. Around, and if you look at a men's t-shirt, you'll see that the where the neck is, that opening, it's reinforced. Because you put it on and there's more pressure. And it's more likely to tear, so it's reinforced. Same thing here. It was reinforced with a type of armor mesh. This is what it's telling us. In the middle of verse 23, and the opening of the mill, the coat in the midst, was according to, some Bibles say, the coat of mail, this is armor, on the side of its opening round about. Why was it like this? Around about with this armor meshing? It says, lo yikare. Uh, so it would not be torn. Verse 24. And they made the hem of the coat. And on the hem of this coat, it says that there was pomegranate. And this was of, these pomegranates were made of, of blue, purple, scarlet. And there's a debate. We have simply the word mashzar. We don't have the word sheish before it, which is linen. So some will say that the scarlet was twisted. Others will say that it's just a reference to the twisted linen, but the word for linen isn't there. It's understood. Verse 25. And they made these bells as well. So they made, as we see here, these, these pomegranates, they made them of a material that was of purple, blue, purple, and scarlet, which was twisted. They also made for the hem of the garment these golden bells of pure gold. So bells of pure gold. They set these bells in between the, the pomegranates upon the hem of the coat all about in the midst of the pomegranates. And we're going to find that they altered one was a golden bell. Then there was these, these different uh, pomegranates that were made of these three materials. And the reason why I say that it was wrote, uh, altered, to, altered, they altered them is because what we see in verse 26. A bell, a pomegranate. A bell, a pomegranate. Upon the hem of the coat all around and then it says, le charette. This is this word for service. And the implication is that the priests, when they served, they did just that. They served. They didn't stand around. 
And therefore, there was that noise that they could hear the work of the priest through these bells. So this was for the service, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 27. Verse 27, we have another garment. And this garment we see here is the coat, coat, coat note, uh, the tunic, in other words. And it says here, and they made the tunic of this linen the work of a weaver for Aaron and his sons. Ketonet is the word I was trying to pronounce for tunic. So they made the ketonet in this way. Also, verse 28, we have another garment, and this is, some will say, mitre. This is the turban, the head covering, verse 28. And they made the turban of linen, and this was of, of a great linen. Also, the hats were, were of a glorious type of hats. They were also made of linen as well. So the hats of the priests or the, the turban of the high priest, they were made of a very uh, fine and glorious linen. And also the, the breeches, the, the pants, they were of fabric and twisted linen. So they were fabric of twisted linen. Verse 29. Another garment, the avnet. The avnet is the sash. And the sash was also this twisted linen. It was comprised of this blue, purple, and crimson. And it was the work of, and this is the time that we have not the word for oreg for a weaver but this is the word rokem which is an embroidery so it's the work of one who does embroidery just as the lord commanded moses verse 30 now in verse 30 we come to the last garment and this is a special piece it's the head plate that was placed upon this turban. It says here, look at verse 30. And they made the tzitz. The tzitz is the head plate. Nezer HaKodesh, the, the holy, we might say diadem or, or uh, crown. It was a pure gold and it was written upon it on this tzitz, on this head plate. It was written an inscription. That was, once again, we find that expression, Petuche Chutam. It was written with the, the engraving of the signet. And again, this is the third or fourth time we've talked about how this relates to authority. The ability to carry out what we've been charged and commanded to do. That God gives us authority to do this. And notice what it was engraved with. It says, Kodesh Lalunai, holy to the Lord. And remember, and I hope that all of you, I say this so, so often, that the term holiness relates to purpose. So holy to the Lord means that they are, are sanctified and consecrated for the purpose of God that he might be glorified by the obedient work of the priests. And when the work is done properly, there's going to be an outcome. God is going to respond and bring change. Change through provision, change through anointing, change through a variety of things that God does in order that his will is accomplished and righteousness is, is obtained. And when righteousness is obtained, God's glory is manifested. So it's inscribed with Kodesh Le'adonai. Last verse tonight, verse 31. And they set upon it. Now, this is for attaching the tzitz, the, the head plate, to the turban. And we see here that they set upon it a a thread or a cord of techelet. Now, there's no question that techelet, this, this blue or turquoise, 
It's the color of a sky on a sunny, just beautiful day. This is the color of tachelet. And it is the primary ingredient in regard to the fabrics, the, the material that was used. Some will say it's a, a material that has in its essence this color. It's not dyed to be that color, but the material itself is of this color. So you shall set upon it a, a cord of blue and place upon the mitznefet. The mitznefet is that turban up above. And it should do so just as the Lord commanded Moses. So we see once more over and over how many times it say, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Everything has to be done in response to the instructions, the commandments of God. And that's why when we are not committed to carrying out exactly what the Word of God says, that we're going to err and it's going to rob us of the anointing, the provision, the power, the illumination that we need to accomplish God's will. And let me close out this study by saying this. When someone lessens the authority of Scripture, when someone is not committed to the truth of Scripture as the Scripture reveals, it's because they're not committed to the things of God. The will of God is not their interest. We need to realize that as human beings, we have no place to question, to disagree, to argue with God. If God says, this is my way, this is who may do this, these people may not, that is God's instructions. Honor God by doing his word. Worship God by following the instructions of scripture. If we turn away from scripture, we turn away from true worship. And when we do not worship God properly, we're not going to experience him. We're not going to be individuals that God will use. So I want to close by asking that question. Do you truly esteem the word of God? Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.